Um, your girl was bored. She was real bored with this episode of Real Housewives of Atlanta. As emotional as it was, I was bored. Let's talk about it. Hey y'all, welcome back to another episode. I am your girl, Beautiful Soul, and we are going to talk about episode four, season 12 of Real Housewives of Atlanta. Last week, I didn't come in for a recap and review. Your girl was dog tired, but here I am wide awake, ready to talk about last night's episode. So the episode started out, we are in New York. It is... um for the pride parade and that very tense moment when nini arrives and jumps on over to the other float so she could go speak to the other ladies and the first person she gets to is cynthia she speaks to cynthia it's in a real nice nasty way she don't have a lot to say to cynthia she speaks to noel has you know a slight conversation with noel hi how you doing you're doing okay you're looking good that kind of stuff um as nini makes her way around the float and speaking to everybody else you know eva was on the float and some other ladies were on the float she you know sashays on off of the float to head back to the other float she was on and um as she's leaving cynthia tells her she looks good and you know nini's being nice nasty nini and cynthia pretty much explains in the confessionals that you know she took a a page out of nini's book it doesn't cost her anything to say hello um, I'm sure it was tense for the both of them. It was, you know, a, a funky moment between the two of them. Uh, but yeah. Now, when I saw Noel on the float, I was like, why is Noel on the float? Isn't this for the housewives of Atlanta? But I guess, I, I mean, you know, a couple of episodes ago, we learned that Noel is sexually fluid. And, you know, I'm like Cynthia. Hey, girl, I just want you to be happy. If it's a her, be happy. If it's a him, be happy. Just live life, be happy, and love love. You know what I'm saying? So um, then we see Marlo. Marlo's there to support, and she ends up on the float. So, you know, I guess it's not strictly uh, all about the housewives themselves i guess you know other characters who make appearances on the show is just fine um eva gives marlo the cold shoulder marlo shows up on their float she gives eva ain't feeling marlo in the least bit and then you know we just got to watch and 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 um see how things go down at new york pride and i was like gosh that looks like a blast they look like they had so much fun back in atlanta we see portia she's with dr sherry uh she's following up the last time she was with dr sherry she learned the truth that dennis actually cheated on her while she was pregnant of course she's devastated she's trying to deal with you know the truth of the matter that dennis actually cheated on her while she was pregnant she keeps referring to you know the baby is cooking in her belly and all of this stuff and portia is just in this moment this time where she's hurt she's angry she feels disrespected um her trust has been um betrayed she is bawling i am bawling y'all know i'm a water bag i just you know i'm that sensitive girl when (laughs) we know that all of this is (laughs) is a storyline um at this point her and dennis are back together they're working it out but seeing her cry it's like i could feel her pain in that moment and i just i was bawling right along with her Um, Dr. Sherry is just trying to, you know, she's, 
she's validating how Portia feels, you know, um, she should demand to be respected. She should demand to be able to trust her man without her man, you know, betraying that trust. She should, you know, demand to be, uh, you know, if I'm going to be loving and faithful to you, I want the same thing in return. But um, being that she's in this vulnerable place, she's very emotional. She's angry. She's hurt. Dr. Sherry is just trying to get her to not make any real lifetime decisions while she's in this space. Um she goes on to remind Portia that, you know, forgiveness is not for him. Forgiveness is for you. You know, I keep hearing that term over and over and over again. And I'm just like, I'm going to be very honest with y'all. I've heard it. I've tried to live my life by it, but I just don't get it. Um, me forgiving somebody for doing me wrong. I <laughs> I mean, I guess in you letting go of that hurt and that anger, it's better for you because then you're you you are able to move forward and grow and, and you know, move on with life and things like that. But in this moment, I don't want to hear that if I'm hurt and I'm angry and I'm pissed and I'm disappointed and you betrayed me. I don't want somebody telling me that, oh, you know, take a deep breath. Remember, forgiveness is for you. I don't want to hear that shit. I'm just being honest and I'm being real. We're over with King and Candy. Brooklyn, in my opinion, is such a cutie pie. We get to see how she's uh, trying to crawl and things like that. The old folks would say um, when when babies are doing things at such a young age, at not an age that expected, like Brooklyn is trying to crawl at such a young age, the old folks would say um, she getting it out the way, meaning she's getting out the way. She's she's doing all of these things earlier so that you can um, you and daddy can can get busy and bring along another baby. You know what I'm saying? I know y'all don't heard that that saying she getting it out the way. Candy and, and Kenya, they get to talking about, you know, the babies and Candy, you know, expecting uh, her baby to be born soon by surrogacy. Um, they get to talking about Mark and and you can tell as Kenya is talking about Mark, um, she's hurting. She's hurting. So I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure if this is all 100% just storyline, um, it, it, it does feel that Kenya is hurting. And we've seen how Mark basically treats Kenya. He, he's not so supportive of Kenya. He keeps his foot on Kenya's neck and pointing out where she messes up, where she goes wrong and things like that. Um, and what we've seen this season with Mark, I'm like, girl, you should have kept him off the camera because uh, not too many of us are liking who he is as a person. Um, there's not much support as in, you know, baby, you could do this, you know, take a deep breath. I'm so proud of you. Those type of uh, comments, you don't get that from him towards Kenya. Candy makes it, um, you know, she uh, she lets us know how Kenya is very submissive in their relationship. They get to talking about um, how, you know, Kenya wants a nanny and Mark doesn't want a nanny as far as when they're traveling and things like that. Kenya, you know, is ready to have some alone time with her husband. She wants to cuddle. She wants to make love. She wants to, you know, be a wife in every sense of the word to her husband. And sometimes you cannot do that with a baby on your hip or sitting in your lap or sleeping in the bed with you. You know what I'm saying? But Mark is not trying to hear it. He does not want a, no parts of a nanny. And I'm like him at that point, I realized him not wanting the nanny furthers him not having to be a husband in every sense of the word, to Kenya. He's using that. Uh-huh, he's using it. We're over with Cynthia and Eva. They're having dinner. They're still in New York. Uh, Eva arrives and she's like, who's this extra plate for? <laughs> Cynthia says, 
Well, Marlo is going to stop by. Eva ain't feeling it. Eva orders all of this food. I don't know how many different dishes Eva ordered, but it was $178 worth of food for herself. I was like, oh, Bravo must be paying for this meal. <laughs> So, you know, they get to, you know, having some conversation about Marlo and her loyalty towards Nene. And um, Cynthia makes it clear that she's aware that Marlo and Nene probably have conversation about her behind her back and things like that. And Eva is just making it very clear. She ain't feeling Marlo. She doesn't feel Marlo has loyalty to anyone else other than Nene. And at that point, that's when Marlo arrives. When Marlo, Marlo arrives, Eva calls over the waitress and has the waitress pack up all her food. Marlo's like, oh, you don't have to run off. Eva is just like, no, nah, mm -mm, I ain't feeling your energy. I don't like your energy. I don't want to be around your energy. So um, Marlo wanted to try something. One, one of the dishes, she wanted a piece of one of the dishes that uh, Mar that uh, Eva had ordered. And Eva was nice enough. You know what? You could take a piece of that and, and put it on a plate for her. But everything else, um, this is what you do. You pack it up. I'm going to go find me another spot in this restaurant. I'm going to go sit and be by myself and enjoy my food and my drink. And that's exactly what she did. She went downstairs. She found her a spot at the bar. They moved all of her food and her drinks to her over at that spot at the bar. And she sat right there and enjoyed herself in her peace and her solitude. After Marlo, after Eva leaves, Marlo, of course, continues to talk crap about Eva, talking about she's broke. She um, and, you know, Cynthia's like she is not broke. And um, Marlo's like, well, she just started working since she met us. And I'm like, girl, who are you? Stop it, Marlo. Who are you? Marlo, she goes on to talking about how, you know, Eva didn't own up to being a bisexual. She wasn't being honest about it. And. Stuff like that. And Cynthia is just looking at her with a look of annoyance because Marlo is just being messy and, and nasty at this point. So the conversation changes because Cynthia is not buying in to what Marlo is putting out there. Um, they get to talking about uh, Marlo now being a mom tea and, um, you know, she now has legal custody of her nephews and how she's been adjusting to that. They get to talking about Noel and um, how Cynthia feels about Noel being sexually fluid. And Cynthia is just like, I just want my child to be happy. I am I, I, I am feeling Cynthia when it comes down to her and Noelle's situation. I'm just like, Cynthia is really, um, she is a person to look up to in this type of situation. There are some families who could be dealing with the same situation that Cynthia is dealing with. And they can look at her and just say, all of the other nonsense is petty. It's not important. What's important is that my child is happy and that's all I care about. Kudos to you, Cynthia. Kudos to you. So they get to talking about, of course, the demise of Cynthia and Nene's relationship. Cynthia brings up the fact that Nene has been trash talking um, her in, in an interview. You know, they show clips of the interview where um, she was talking, you know, Nene was basically uh, saying some real nasty things about Cynthia. And Marlo brings up the fact that Cynthia has called Nene toxic in some interviews that Cynthia herself has had. Marlo goes further to say, you know, basically she expects Cynthia to take the high road. And Cynthia said, I'm not doing that anymore. Everybody looks to me to take the high road. Why isn't anybody talking to Nene and telling Nene to take the high road? I absolutely am 100% team Cynthia in this moment. Why is it that she always has to take the high road? Why is it that she cannot express how she feels about how Nene is trash talking her? If she feels that Nene is toxic, 
She should be able to express that. There is no reason why everybody is looking for Cynthia to take the high road and everybody is saying, oh, that's just Nene. We expect that from Nene. That's some nonsense, Cynthia. I feel you, girl. Cynthia ain't feeling it. She's like, whatever. We're over with Portia. Portia is getting ready. Today is her first day back at work. She's getting baby PJ together because she's taking baby PJ to work with her. Um, she's running around trying to get everything taken care of, get baby PJ dressed, you know, making sure she's looking good because, you know, even though um, Dish Nation is a radio station, it is an on camera radio station. So she's going to be on camera. So she has to have herself together. Um, her car is somewhere else, so they ended up having to call an Uber so she could get to the station. She gets everything in the car. She gets baby PJ packed in the car. Mama Diane comes out, and Mama Diane says, do you got enough bottles? Portia forgot to pack the bottles. <laughs> Portia forgot to pack the bottles. I was like, girl, if that is not single motherhood, I don't know what is. There have been many a days where I had to pack my child up, so that I could get to work, so that I could drop him off um, at the babysitters. And I ain't packed no bottles. I ain't got no diapers, but I got him all packed up. <laughs> it's going to get better. You'll get your routine together, Portia. I promise you. Next, we're with Nene and Marlo. They're out having a nice lunch. Marlo sits down. She's going to order her a glass of champagne. Nene orders herself a glass of Chardonnay. Um, and then, you know, they get to talking. Marlo brings Nene up to speed about what happened with Eva at the restaurant and how Eva, you know, pretty much walked away. Marlo then starts to try to talk to Nene um, about you know, the goings on between her and Cynthia. Nene feels Cynthia, um, is, Cynthia has been portraying her as not being a good friend. And Nene insists that she loved Cynthia as a true sister. She even got, she broke down in the confessional, confessional. She was tearing up. She just started to cry. Um, but I'm, I just, you know, I, I felt Nene, Nene, Nene has treated her friends like crap. There is no other way to put it. Over the seasons, we have watched how she's treated Cynthia like crap. We, we even remember when Cynthia and Nene fell out because of how Nene was disrespecting Cynthia's husband, Peter. Remember that? The whole friendship contract and all of that stuff. Y'all remember that? And I was with Cynthia. Nene was out of pocket. Nene was out of line. Nene, you can't continue to treat your friends like crap. Talk down to them. Be condescending to them. Always throwing sarcastic blows towards them. And think that shit doesn't hurt. And don't think that at one point, Enough is going to be enough. You have to recognize how you treat your friends and you just have to do better, Nene. Nobody wants to be talked down to. Nobody wants to deal with your sarcastic comments all the time. Nobody wants to deal with your condescension. That's hurtful. And to repeatedly have to take those type of blows from you, that gets old, Nene. You have to recognize what's coming out of your mouth and can it be perceived as disrespectful or you have to recognize that maybe I shouldn't cross the line this time. Maybe I shouldn't be condescending this time. Maybe I shouldn't be sarcastic this time. Maybe I'm going to say something nice this time. Marlo tells Nene that they both are wrong in the situation. Um, Cynthia has said some things. And of course, Nene has said some things. Nene feels a certain kind of way. She's not in agreement. Marlo suggests that, you know, they at least have a conversation whether they're not going to be friends ever again, you know, just to have some closure so that they can both move on. Nene refuses and basically tells Marlo to stay out, to stay out of it. Um, Nene 
just does not want to take any type of responsibility for her wrongdoing and how she's treated Cynthia over the years. To get so pissed off with Cynthia over her friend coming to her Seagram's um, launch party and then your friend telling you, well, I didn't know she was coming because the last I heard she wasn't coming. And then when when the person who's responsible for Kenya being there owns up and says, no, Cynthia didn't know. I was the one that talked um, Kenya into coming and I didn't tell Cynthia because we both decided that it would be a, a, a wonderful surprise for Cynthia. Just take it for what it is that they are telling you, Nene. Nobody was trying to hurt you, girl. Nobody was trying to make you feel a certain kind of way. I know how the editing look. We all know how editing does things. We know how the editing department does things to stir up controversy, controversy to move along storylines and to create drama. So Nene, girl, you, you bear some responsibility in what's going on between you and Cynthia, Cynthia, if not all of it. Cynthia is just no longer trying to appease you. Cynthia is no longer trying to kiss your butt. Cynthia is just not doing that anymore, and she's sick and tired of it. That's why y'all are not friends. Now, if Cynthia would have um, backpedaled or kissed up to you or all of that stuff, then you would just be hunky-dory with it. But she's not doing that. So here we are. We're over with Ty, Candy, and Ace. They're going to the doctor um, for a checkup. Ace gets to see his baby sister. They are at, they are at Dr. Jackie's office. Um, Candy sort of bre breaks it down how it's working to Ace. You know, Ace, remember I told you we're going to go see your baby sister? She's not in my tummy. She's in um, Shadina's tummy. And we're going to get to see her in a minute. And, and Ace, he's so freaking cute. He got it. He understood it. And so, you know, we get to, they get to doing the sonogram and things like that. We get to see the baby. And um, Candy pretty much is in a position where she says she feels like she's the father um, in this pregnancy because she's not the one that's pregnant. You know, it's it's the one who's pregnant who has to deal with all of the, um, you know, emotions, the the swelling of the breast, the swelling of the belly, all of that stuff. And she's not having to do that. The husband is just kind of like off to the side chilling. So in recognizing that she's starting to appreciate her role in this surrogacy, you know what I'm saying? So they get to discuss, you know, what happens during delivery. Dr. Jackie breaks it down. You know, once the baby's born, um, Shadina gets pushed off to her room and then Candy Todd and family go into another room and the baby is immediately brought over um, to Candy and Todd for skin contact and, you know, to sue the baby and all of that stuff. Um, they get to talking about who's going to cut the umbilical cord. Um, Candy says if, if, if Todd wants to do it, she's fine with Todd doing it, but if he doesn't want to do it, um, she'll do it. Todd doesn't even want to see the baby coming out of the honey pot. And, um, yeah, I guess I can understand. My mama, she was in the room. She just, she couldn't handle it. My brother, when I look between my legs as they're up in those stirrups, <laughs> as I was delivering, my bro all I could see was my, um, my OB doctor because she was real short. I could see her. And then above her, I saw my brother with this look of, um, he was fascinated but yet disgusted at the same time. I will never forget that visual. So while they're in there having, you know, conversations with the doctor and Shadina and all of them, Todd and, the ba and baby Ace, um, Kenya, Kenya sends Candy a text asking her to come over. It's really important. And, um, they ask, you know, have they picked out a, you know, have they picked out a name for the baby? Ace said that she he wants to name the baby Blaze as we know now. Uh 
Candy and Todd and um, Shadina. Shadina has delivered the baby. They did name the baby Blaze. So, um, yeah, baby was delivered healthy. Uh, we got to saw a little snippet of the baby on social media. So congratulations to Todd and Candy on the birth of baby Blaze. I just I just wanted to point out I love Todd and Ace's relationship. They they are truly not just father and son. They are just friends. Ace Boom Coons. He can get down on Ace's level and Ace can get up to Todd's level. It's it's a beautiful relationship. So um, as they're walking out, Kenya, um, Candy explains to Todd that uh, she's going to go and check on Kenya because she got a, you know, a text from Kenya. She's worried about Kenya. And um, she explains to Todd what, you know, what the situation is. And Todd and Ace go rolling off. They go on to have a play day. And Candy heads on over to Kenya's. So we're over at Kenya's and. Um, you know, Kenya, she's got all of this nervous joy, in my opinion. She's putting up this front like she's so happy. Everything's cool. But um, you, if if you're really paying attention, you can see that um, that is masking um, some hurt. You know, I'm just one of those people who can um, look beyond what you're trying to give me. Um, I'm focused on your eyes. I'm fo focused on your smile. And um, those those two things will tell me more than what you're trying to show me. And um, that's what I saw in Kenya. You take a look at her eyes. She's she's not happy, even though she's got that big, beautiful smile and she's laughing and she's giggling and all of that stuff. Uh -uh. So they, you know, get some fruit. They get some drinks. They sit down. They have a, they have a chat. Um Kenya opens up to let Candy know that uh, her sex life has not picked up since having the baby. Um, uh, her and her husband had recently celebrated their anniversary, but the husband, Mark, does not want to travel with a nanny, refuses to travel with a nanny, and then he refused to travel altogether. She ended up going to the Turks and Caicos with baby Brooklyn to celebrate her anniversary, but no Mark. And at this point, I'm like, oh, this is this is um, it came out in the blogs a few weeks ago that, you know, Nene had been having conversations with Mark. And um, at some point, Nene, Nene told Kenya that her husband doesn't even like her. And so that was put out in the blogs. And when I when, you know, in, in watching this scene go down where she tells Candy that she went on her anniversary to Turks and Caicos without her husband. He didn't go. I'm like, oh, well, maybe there is some truth to the fact that Mark doesn't really like her. But we'll see. They get the talking, her, um, Kenya and Candy. And um, Kenya is just heartbroken. She's hurt at how her husband is treating her. I'm telling you, it's it, when you are in love with a man and you want to express that love to your man sexually, um, emotionally, and he's not reciprocating that love. That's a form of mental abuse on top of, you know, constantly putting her down, um, you know, all of the little nitpicking that he does with her. That's a form of mental abuse. And I just... No, as I've grown over the years and learned from past relationships, there is no way that I'm going to be in love with a man and want to be with him physically, want to kiss on him, want to dote on him and just want to be up underneath him. And he does not reciprocate that to me in return. And he's doing things that hurt me. And I try to express to him that what you're doing is hurting me. There's no way I could continue to be with that person because I just that hurt and that pain. It's unbearable. And I don't want someone that's constantly keeping me 
in a state of pain and hurt. Men, when you do this to your significant others, it is a form of mental abuse. You are abusing them. It's hurtful emotionally and physically. When you hurt someone to their core, to their heart, that hurts physically. Kenya girl, I'm sorry. You, you. You haven't, you, you know, none of these women are my favorites. None of them are my favorites. I call them out the same when they're right and when they're wrong. But Kenya, you do not deserve this. Even Portia has recognized that. No, she will not tolerate that type of behavior. Kenya, get you a therapist, girl, so you can build up whatever you're lacking so you can... Um, stand up for yourself and walk away. Although we all believe that this is a storyline. I just needed to put that in there. Um, Kenya makes it clear that Mark loves Brooklyn, but yet she feels pushed aside. It's because he's pushing her aside. There's no other way around it. He is pushing her aside. At this point, for whatever reason, he does not want to be um, sexually um Involved with Kenya, nor mentally involved with Kenya. He wants nothing to do with Kenya. It's all about Brooklyn. Candy says, well, have you tried to tell him how you feel? And she just goes to breaking down and crying and bawling. And, you know, she's tried to tell him how she feels, but it always turns into an argument. And she just does not want to argue. She just wants to tell the man how she feels. Well, there's a reason why it turns into an argument, Kenya. It turns into an argument because then it truly pushes you away and he's free to go and do whatever it is that he's doing. Whoever you're not getting the lovey dovey, the cuddling, the the sex, you're not getting any of that of what you need from your man. So who's getting it? Who's getting it? Somebody's getting it. So, like I said, she breaks down crying. Um, Candy points out, you know, as hurt as she is, she's like, has he crossed lines? He must have called you out your name. Kenya didn't respond, but her level of uncomfortableness, is that a word? But y'all know what I mean. Um, it basically confirmed that, yes, he said some things out of the way towards Kenya. Mental abuse, y'all. Y'all let me know what you think. That was the end of the episode. There was some very emotional moments in the episode. I was bawling when Kenya was bawling and I was bawling when Portia was bawling, you know, because I'm a woman. My heart has been broken. I've been cheated on. I can I can relate. I can put myself in their shoes. I know the hurt. I know the pain. So, yeah, I bawled too. Y'all get down in the comments. Y'all let me know your thoughts on the episode. I didn't talk about everything. So if there's something that went down in the episode that you want to discuss, you guys know you can put it down in the comment section or head on over to um, the hotline. The telephone number to the hotline is area code 470-729-1909. I just dropped a video um, sharing some of the hotline calls and me responding to them. So make sure you check that out. But that was it. Let me give a shout out uh, to the notification squad. Thank y'all so much for holding me down. Um, let me give a shout out to my Patreon family. Thank you to all of my new subscribers and my old subscribers. If you've come across this video and are not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and click that subscribe button down below. I would love to have you. We have a good time over here. There's no drama. There's no maliciousness um, in anything that I bring to my channel. Whatever I'm discussing, I do it as respectfully as possible. Down in the comments, um, my crew, it just seems like we all have a shared understanding. We respect each other, even though we may not agree. Um, we allow each other to... Um, express our opinions without, you know, other people going over, um, tearing somebody else's opinion down. You know what I'm saying? So if 
this is what you're looking for, I would love to have you. We have a good time over here. As we head out, y'all, do me that solid. Give me a thumbs up. Y'all know I am trying to rebuild this channel after YouTube sh basically shut down the other channel. Um, so I'm trying to rebuild and thumbs ups, thumbs up gets me recognized here on YouTube. So make sure y'all hit that thumbs up. That's all I got. Remember to be good to yourselves and each other. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Yes, yes, yes. The Beautiful Souls Boutique is now open. We've got mugs. We've got tote bags. We've got hoodies. And we've got so much more. The boutique is open 24 hours a day for your shopping pleasure. Go on over and check it out. And as always, I thank you for your support.